Okay, hi there. Welcome to a macro video uh, where we're going to be looking at the multiplier. This is a series of uh, short videos looking at the concept. Uh, we'll do the numerical calculations in our second video. But an initial change in aggregate demand can have a much greater final impact on the level of equilibrium national income. And this is known as the multiplier effect. Sometimes we call it the national income multiplier or the fiscal multiplier, but the multiplier effect is, uh, is just fine. And it's one of the most important concepts you can use when applying, analysing and evaluating the effects of, of, for example, a change in government spending or a change in taxation. The multiplier is also great to use when analysing changes in export sales or a change in investment on the wider economy, including real GDP and employment. So what do we mean by the multiplier? Well, the multiplier effect occurs when an initial injection of demand and spending into the circular flow causes a bigger, larger, final increase in real national income, GDP adjusted for inflation. Now, this injection of demand might have come, for, for example, from a, a surge in our export sales overseas, uh, goods and services leaving the economy, but money coming into the circular flow, or capital investment spending by businesses, or from government spending. There is something called the multiplier coefficient, which is just a number. And the multiplier coefficient uh, itself is found by the formula that the multiplier is the final change in real GDP divided by the initial change in the component of aggregate demand. Now, unlike elasticity, we're not trying to deal here in percentage changes. We're just dealing in whole numbers. The change in GDP divided by the change in demand will give us a coefficient, which is just a number. So, for example, if the government was to inject, let's say, £5 billion of extra spending into the healthcare system or into building new schools or a transport infrastructure project, uh, but this eventually caused real GDP to grow by, let's say, 12 billion, then that's quite a big multiplier. The multiplier would have a value of 12 over 5, which, if my maths is right, is 2.4. And 2.4 is a large multiplier. Uh, a 5 billion injection of demand is leading to a significantly higher level of GDP. Of course, the original 5 billion is included in the 12. The difference is the extra 7 that comes from the knock-on effects. Now, the multiplier effect comes about because one agent's spending, the government, for example, or overseas consumers, is another agent's income. So when a spending project creates new jobs, for example, that is a flow of income into households and that creates extra injection of, de of demand and income into and around the circular flow. And this is how the multiplier effect can take hold. Some good examples. Uh, this uh, is uh, very topical. At the moment, several regions in the UK are bidding for funding to help smooth the way for investment in the gigafactories that will be making the, the, the electric car batteries as we transition away from petrol and diesel vehicles. Indeed, there's a brilliant FT video, a quite brilliant 11-minute video, uh, looking at the Port of Blythe, which is becoming a, a world-class hub for offshore renewable energy. Uh, Blythe is a few miles north of Newcastle upon Tyne on the northeast coast. And uh, it could be the proposed site of one of the big electric car battery fact factories, the so-called gigafactories. Now, I strongly recommend you have a look at this video. It is a brilliant exemplification of the possible multiplier effects and also some of the limits to the multiplier. And I'll post a link to this great video in the comments section of, uh, of this, of this uh, session. Another good example is the government's decision to allocate £1.7 billion to a whole raft of relatively small-scale infrastructure projects as part of the levelling up agenda, targeting areas where there might be some flood defence schemes, for example, or there might be some improved road um, networks or perhaps the light rail. Um, small-scale infrastructure projects designed to have a multiplier effect at regional level. Here's a good example of multipliers in the development context, a road building project in Kenya, pictured uh, about three, three and a half years ago. Again, 
these kind of projects can bring about positive multiplier effects. And so too, in the wider context, uh, government environmental policies. This is the construction of flood defences at Saltburn, lovely part of the of the northeast coast again, designed to uh, to improve flood defences clearly, but also to create jobs and output in the local area. So why might you expect a high multiplier from these types of government spending projects? Well, it's probably worth thinking about the nature of these projects. Oftentimes, if you're building homes and new motorways and you're building flood defence schemes, uh, these are often quite labour intensive and uh, they often involve uh, often using local materials. The multiplier effect tends to be high when a project is labour intensive because it creates lots of new jobs and also when the equipment and maybe the inputs, the component parts are sourced domestically rather than perhaps imported from outside the economy. You see when the rate of imports is high uh, for a given project, the value of the multiplier tends to be lower. What you want is money to stay inside the regional or the national circular flow. So the, the multiplier process is best described. Let's consider the government spending £200 million, for example, in a project to build more affordable homes. That injection of money we would give a term to, we'd call it an expansionary fiscal policy. It's designed to stimulate demand and jobs and growth. And the £200 million itself, of course, is an injection into the circular flow and counts as part of the multiplier. But somebody has to build and design uh, and finish the houses. So many supply chain businesses would benefit directly, including the supply industries, including architects, structural engineers, uh, as well as people involved in, in construction. Construction of new houses therefore generates a new flow of factor incomes. One person's spending is somebody else's income and uh, in theory that spending project will add to the wages and profits flowing around the local economy. And if that extra money stays inside the circular flow of income, then that can lead to a strong positive multiplier effect. So the multiple effect is likely to be quite high and the resultant final impact on GDP quite large if the extra incomes stay within the circular flow. We'll have more to say about that in our second revision video. Just to finish with, uh, how can we indicate a multiplier effect using an aggregate demand and supply diagram? Well, this is uh, a good way of, of using your theory diagrams. Before we look at the example, some important exam hints when drawing ADAS diagrams in your assignments and your papers. First of all, remember to label accurately. The general price level goes on the y-axis and real national output or real GDP goes on the x-axis. Don't forget to label aggregate demand and supply curves and indicate any equilibrium price level and GDP by drawing to the x and y-axis. And keep in mind that you need to carefully label any shifts in ADAS and any associated new equilibrium points. So here's our initial situation where uh, national output is at Y1, uh, general price level GPL1, and the economy is operating with a negative output gap because Y1 is less than YP. Well, an injection of demand, for example, from investment or government spending or exports, would shift the aggregate demand curve to AD2, leading to an expansion of aggregate supply and taking the economy towards a new equilibrium point at y output Y2 and general price level GPL2. And the economy is now using up some of the spare capacity. Well, the multiplier effect could be where you say, well, actually, the final increase in demand is higher than the initial change. So this is quite a neat way of showing the multiplier. One person's spending is somebody else's income. So in fact, with a positive multiplier, we might end up with aggregate demand AD3 instead of AD2. And again, that takes the economy to a higher level of national output Y3. And it's getting close to a potential level of production. Can there be a negative multiplier effect? Can this, this effect work in reverse? The answer is yes. The negative multiplier effect occurs when an initial leakage or withdrawal of spending from the circular flow leads to knock-on effects and a bigger final drop in GDP. So yes, the multiplier effects can, can work in reverse. And often uh, we associate that with uh, major 
plant closures where, where hundreds, often thousands of jobs are lost. Just a few months back, in the summer of 2021, Swindon's Honda factory uh, closed its doors for the final time. I think it had been op in operation for, for just under 40 years. And the closure of that one car production plant in Swindon in Wiltshire is estimated to have cost 3,000 jobs uh, and also will obviously affect other businesses which act as suppliers to the factory. So that's a negative multiplier effect. And here's another good example, I think, from Scotland, the McVitie's Biscuit Factory uh, in uh, Glasgow. Risks costing the Scottish economy 49 million a year, according to analysis. So this um, research by Glasgow City Council found that uh, as well as the 470 jobs at the factory which would go, at least another 400 jobs uh, would, were at risk in companies that relied on the factory. And that's a good example, I think, of the negative multiplier effect. Now, the multiplier effect uh, you know, arises when one agent spending is another agent's income. That's a key part of the discussion. And the effect can be both positive and negative, depending on what's happened to the component of demand. In the second video in this series, this series, we will look at some numerical examples of how we actually go about calculating the value of the multiplier. But I hope this introduction has been helpful. Stay with us, stay safe, and uh, stay focused, and hope to see you again sometime really soon. Take care.